Hey, welcome to What We Are Reading. My name is Joel Littlefield. I'm the lead pastor of New City Church in Bath, Maine. And my name is Eric O'Donnell. I am the executive pastor at New City Church in Bath, Maine. And we are here. We're here. And you are there. Yep. Whether they are there, we are here. You're somewhere. We're here. <laughs> it's five o'clock. No. No. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't like country music. I don't uh, know why I referred to that. Do you like country music? I'm not a country music fan. No. Never was? I mean, you grew up in kind of Hickville. <laughs> Albion, Maine. <laughs> you were <laughs> right next door. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I did grow up in Freedom, Hick- Unity. Like- unity, dude. Thorndike, yeah. Maine. Dude, oh my, my high school was in a cow pasture. I mean. Yeah, mine wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, first question on the table is, was your high school in a cow pasture or something worse or something comparable? A manure pit. A manure pit. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Did you, did you ever like, did you ever fall into that? I was, I was never a country music fan. Um, never. Like, okay. my dad listened to country. He went from, he went from like, uh, hair bands to country music as he got oh. old. And so I like took all of his hairband stuff, and then I got, I like went the other way. I went like I went more classic rock, and you know, which I know hairbands are part of that. But um, yeah, and uh, I think when I went I went more more old school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was kind of my thing, rock and roll, man. Uh, that was that was my thing. Hair Nation. Time. Yeah, right. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever see that Sirius XM station? Hair yeah. Nation. Yep. Like, oh, yeah, man. definitely have. Dude, hair bands, 80s music, I don't know, dude. It I usually just laugh at it most of the time. The sound, <laughs> the 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 booming bass drum, like the massive echoes on every instrument, mm. the reverb, overboard. And well, some Yeah. I can't listen to that. I can't listen to most of it now because I've learned what these songs mean and I'm like Nope. Can't sing it. <laughs> Not listening to that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh. Uh, la- last Hickville High School thing is, did you have a ride your tractor to school day? Oh my gosh, no. You didn't? No. Dude, we had that. No. There was a designated day every year, r- drive your tractor to school day. And uh, so that was, uh, I think that I think that I, I win. My school was more hick than yours, I guess. So Sorry for accusing you. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's okay. You know, yeah. all is forgiven. Are you, how's your work situation? Oh, we're, we're okay. Yeah, uh, that was uh, that was a text message. I wanted to silence my phone. I just want you all to know if you don't know this part about Eric, Eric, he knows enough to be able to hack into the Pentagon, <laughs> but <laughs> but he never will <laughs> because he's a Christian. Oh <laughs> uh, no! How about so, those red socks? How about huh? those red socks? <laughs> Are they even playing? Do I need to do I need to delete that? No. no, I'm good, man. I'm not bleeding that. Uh, so, dude, I am. Uh, I'm really excited to be getting into this conversation today. We are not dude. talking about Soul Winner today. No, no Soul Winner today. Sorry to disappoint all you Soul Winner fans, but because uh, we, we're fans, we're fans. we're fans. Yeah, for sure. We are. We're doing a face off. Yeah, I right. stand in. I stand in the winning corner. <laughs> And you, you determined this already? <laughs> oh wait, is this not? Oh, I thought this was a predetermined plan. Oh, oh, okay. No, because no, this is this is unscripted. Okay. Unscripted. That's right. We are we're representing two uh, great men who have contributed to the work of systematic theology. Can I can I just preface this by I'm not going to do Burke off a lot of justice here. <laughs> okay. And I'm honestly going to let. I mean, I don't know John Frame. Right. So we are we are comparing. Uh, 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 one section of systematic theology books from uh, Louis Burkhoff or Louis Burkhoff would be Louis. We'll call him Louis. Louis. Louis? I don't know. L O U I S. Would that be Louis or is it Louis? I like Louis, man. Uh, I like L- Louis. Louis is normally L E W I S. I, I, I think you're right. Could be I'm, Louis. I think I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's wow. Louis. He's no. rolling over Dude, his grave right Lewis. now. Let's, let's, yeah. call him, let's call him Louis Burkhoff. Louis, and yes. I think I've always said Louis. I don't know why I said Louis when we uh, when we started this. Probably because we're recording. That's why. Versus John M. Frame. John M. Frame. John M. Frame. So my, my book is, uh, the, this is Systematic Theology, An Introduction to Christian Belief by John Frame. What's, what's yours called? What's the title? Uh, systematic Theology. So. 
so simple. It's short and sweet, dude. <laughs> He's just he just lays it out. He just systematic theology. All right. What more does there need to be said? <laughs> I can close the book now and go home. So um, before we get into it, and uh, we're gonna we'll tell you what topic we're looking at. We're, the whole point of this is to really just kind of compare. We've been wanting to do this for a while. These are massive books. If you guys have read systematic theology books, you know that these are filled with uh, all kinds of doctrine, all kinds of teaching. But basically, uh, a systematic theology book is different from biblical theology because you're looking at the various systems of doctrine that make up Christianity that we Mm. believe in, Mm. as opposed to biblical theology, which is the greater story. So if we were reading a book on biblical theology, it would start in Genesis and it would carry us through every book of the Bible, and we'd be looking at how the Bible all fits together as one story. But this breaks it down into systems like what we're looking at today. What are we looking at today? Yeah, so we are we're looking at the means of grace in general. The means of grace in general. Okay. So we are we are we're literally talking about the introduction to this topic, um, and and it's, so it's going to be from a very high level. That's right. Um, we're not we're not diving deep into all of the <clears throat> the means of grace. Right. Um, but we just thought it would be fun to find one of these topics and uh, and do a comparison. Uh, between the two, because uh, uh, my my understanding of John Frame is uh, the book is written uh, in a way it's, where it's very readable. Yeah. Um, you can you can kind of sit down and almost you know read it like a chapter book. Um, not not that that's bad. Very I, much I think so. that yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it actually makes it easier to to kind of follow along. Um, he's got some nice diagrams. I really, I it's I full of diagrams. I flipped through your, I flipped through the book. I think it looks, it looks great. I've read uh, a couple of the chapters in there. I think you can borrow it. It, it reads. Really good. won't know. Oh, if you're I'm cheating, not, I wouldn't set him aside. Okay, you just supplement. Yeah, yeah. See that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and so, uh, Burkoff. <laughs> just to kind of give a, a rounded view here. Um, there's there's two people that he is often citing um, in uh, in the systematic theology um, as uh, either incorrect or they're only you know partial in their explanation. Uh, two the two names are often uh, Hodge, which I have no idea. Charles Hodge. Okay. Charles Hodges, yeah, and McPherson. Okay, I don't know that one. <clears throat> so he often will will talk about those two and their view, but doesn't always explain it. Okay. Doesn't always explain their view. Yeah. Um. It just, you know. Anyway. Yeah. 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 And and this one and and frame is set up uh, in the introduction or actually in the preface. The preface or the forward, excuse me, is written by Packer, and he he explains that frame is sort of unique in his approach that he's not. Um, he's considered a, a systematic theologian for the future reformer. As in you had guys like um, Hodge that were for the 20th century, and then before that you had guys for more of the 18th century ref- uh, reformed people. Um, and so <clears throat> John is more of like a the, the systematic theologian for tomorrow, whereas Burkhoff, I, I don't know if he's as well known. I don't know. Or if he's as well used today as he was 50 years ago. Do you know? I don't I don't think that he is. I think I think still the most widely used systematic theology is still Grudem. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's it's the most widely used and accepted uh, through most of the uh, like the, the school seminary and, and yeah. all that. And I think some people are pulling away from that in light of some recent stuff with Grudem just because of his certain Things in recent, yeah, no, no, like a blatant sin, but like his takes and his standings on certain cultural issues today has, I think, caused people to kind of pull away from his system. Mm-hmm. I'll leave that for people to just right. make and explore. We won't talk right. about that. But okay. we're, means so, of grace. Before we get to means of grace, okay, what, when was yours published? Oh man. Okay, so this this was published, and where? Where was it? Yeah, published? Does it tell you? Mine says right in the first. All right, you tell me first while I look for it. Because I can't. Uh... Okay, so uh, Bergoff, I know that this was published in 1938. 1938. Um, okay. <clears throat> yes, and that actually might have been the republishing date. Okay. Uh, nope. The republishing date was 1949. Okay. And it was 
see my print here, which is a 2017 reprint. Was reprinted in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville, Kentucky. All yeah. right. So this has a. Um, let's see. This has copyright. This has a copyright of 2013. Um, scripture quotations. Blah blah blah. Yeah. No. This is this is 2013. Very modern. Um, printed in the United States of America. Um, <laughs> yep, America of America. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I, I have. I don't think I've ever gone on record ever saying that, and I'm not going to. I just it. did, but I didn't. I don't even know where it's okay. from. It's from Patriots. Oh, it's it. <laughs> Which uh, I'm not bashing Patriots. We can uh, be patriotic, but just, uh, I've just I've just heard a lot of people say it. Oh yeah, and, just, and people say it in fun. Yeah. So that was that's, fun. That's how I meant it. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, so. A couple of different guys approaching the means of grace. Means of grace being <laughs> under this larger sub, larger heading of the doctrine of the church. And in the midst of talking about the doctrine of the church, both of these guys dive into the means of grace. And both of us, we've each taken a few notes based on this chapter. We might read a, f- a few chunks from it to help uh, kind of see the perspective of these guys a little bit better. Mm. But does Burkhoff give a definition? Does he start off this? Is there any place where he would say, here's a definition of the means of grace? Or any explanation that would help our listeners kind of move forward with, okay, here's what we're talking about. If you need a second to look, I, I'll, I can share John Frames. Why don't you go ahead and share John Frames and I'll. And I'll maybe you can even just say, yeah, mm-hmm. this is what he says, or maybe he has a different take on it based okay. on what you know. So, Frame starts off by just saying that the means of grace begins by first understanding what, what grace itself is. As on God's unmerited favor, where merit, or excuse me, where wrath is merited. So, which, first of all, I really appreciate John's, you know, everybody has a little bit of a different definition of what grace is, but I like that. God's unmerited favor, where wrath is merited. But then he goes on to say that that grace that accesses our salvation has to go, we have to be able to continue to access that beyond our salvation, like throughout the rest of our lives. How do we access that? And there are certain means that God has given us to access that grace continually throughout the rest of our Christian life. That's, I think, a, a working definition of what the means of grace are. Burkhoff say the same? So you kind of give it a little mm-hmm. different twist? Uh, Burkhoff, I think he's, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't quite go to uh, like that, that main idea right away. Okay. Like he, he takes his sweet time in explaining that through the, his <laughs> sweet the whole time. <laughs> through the whole introduction. Okay. Um, so you know he I mean the first the first sentence is uh, fallen man receives all blessings of salvation out of the eternal fountain of the grace of God in virtue of the merits of Jesus Christ and through the operation of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's just, that's basically saying mm-hmm. what John Frame is saying in it's God's unmerited favor. We've all received that unmerited Absolutely. grace of God. Okay. So, like, uh, but what he does from this point forward is he starts he starts breaking that down into the next topics he's going to be going into. Okay. Um, so he addresses the church okay. mostly into the introduction. Does Freeman talk he, about the church at all? He addresses the church, but he begins by breaking down. He he comes out right away and tells what those. He basically says there are three means of grace. Okay. Primary means of grace. And the three means of grace that he says right off the bat are, and he calls it the short answer. So he under, he's giving the sense that these are, this is the short answer and there are subdivisions out of these that make up all of it. But the three are the word of God, fellowship, and prayer. Those being the three means of grace. And so then he does and he sets himself up in this chapter to break down all of those he spends a huge chunk on the word a huge chunk on fellowship and a huge chunk on prayer hmm. similar at all to uh, burkoff i would say that's pretty close to what burkoff uh is saying uh so he has uh the the sa- the word and the sacraments okay he has um maybe i didn't know does he talk about fellowship well, he talk, yeah, he talks about the church, okay. but um, I don't think that's one of his main points because he talks about the church as being uh, not necessarily instrumental, but administrative. Okay. Okay. Interesting. In that. Interesting. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm kind of getting a pattern here of their differences, honestly. It's interesting because Frame actually brings up how most Reformed theologians don't consider fellowship a means of grace, but Frame comes out and says... But it clearly is a means of grace, and he makes an he makes an argument for how 
it is a means of grace. So it, it is interesting that Burkhoff mm-hmm. doesn't mention it specifically. So, but he does say the church is a means of grace. Okay. So he, he does say uh, the church may, may be represented as a great means of grace, uh, which Christ, working through the Holy Spirit, uses for the gathering of the elect. So there you go. in a way, he does say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but later on, he basically says, but the church is not instrumental. Okay. In, in being the means of grace, but more used as administration in, uh, in the word. Yep. Right? Um, in the word and the sacraments. Um, and moreover, uh, he talks about faith, conversion, and prayer being the first fruits of the gra- of grace of God. Okay. All right. That's cool. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So the church is not a means of grace alongside of the word and the sacraments because her power... Uh, because her power in promoting the work of grace of God consists only in administration of these. Okay, okay. So, so, so I think there is a separation there from what Frame is saying versus what so. Burkhoff is saying. I think so. And of course, I, I did not get to completely digest everything he writes on fellowship. or but, but he does, in fellowship, talk about that this is the koinonia, the gathering of God's people, the common fellowship in this this commonness that we have in sharing with each other what God has done, mm. that we this need for each other. Here's a here's a point that Frame makes, which is really interesting. He he divides these into word, fellowship, and prayer, but he makes these points. He says that the word of God is both a private private and public means of grace. So you can access God's word in your home by yourself in a closet doesn't matter, but you can also do it publicly. Prayer is also private and public, but fellowship is the only thing that's public only. You cannot access that means of grace alone. Mm. And so it's unique that God has provided this in, like this encapsulation that there is this massive piece of God's grace that we access that cannot be accessed alone. Yeah. Which is awesome. I don't think I don't think that Burkhoff would argue against that. I don't think though. so either. I I I just think that the way that he looks at, when, like he's calling the church, the fel- like fellowship. Yeah. And so I think he just, but he doesn't he doesn't go into it as uh, uh, as Frame does. As, okay. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. I was just looking through the rest of the the points here in this in this chapter. Yeah. Um, and the, I don't see I don't see him mention fellowship or even like gathering as one of the. Um, as one of the means. Okay. I'll, you know, the only time he touches upon it is in the introduction. Okay. Let me read this part about fellowship. We'll get an idea for what he says. He says, The second means of grace is fellowship with God and other believers. We usually think of fellowship as parties and dinners, but in the New Testament it is much more. The Greek word for fellowship is koinonia, which comes from the adjective koinos, or common. Fellowship is a commonness. It is sharing something with someone else. In the New Testament it sometimes means sharing goods, in 2 Corinthians 8.4, Philippians 1.5, it refers to giving gifts to help needy fellow, fellow Christians. In that sense, the early church had a truly radical fellowship. In Acts 4.32, we read, Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that they had that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. They shared their hearts. They shared their souls. They shared their property. Some of the Christians sold property and gave the proceeds to the apostles for the needs of the fellowship. That is a kind of fellowship that we rarely see in the church today, but it is simply an expression of the love that Jesus taught. He told us to love one another. That means being ready to lay down your life for one another. And so I, I don't think that they would disagree. I just, mm. I love that. I guess one thing that this shows is that, man, when you read the, the context of different people and their teachings, you get different layers. Mm. So honestly, man, we're not like pinning Burkoff against Frank here. Like we're just, we're, it's a fun way to say, right. man, these two guys speaking from different eras to different cultures, different communities from uh, a life of studying God's word and being in fellowship with him have, have something to contribute and, mm. it's diff- and it's different layers. And it's just, it's awesome, man. Right. But I, but I like Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I like the way that Frame reads. Seriously. It I probably should read more Burkoff because I don't really know. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, Come man. Come on. Give him a fair <sighs> shot. <laughs> Dude, give him a fair shot. I wonder how tall he was. What does that have? I don't know. Just wonder what his stature was like. <laughs> like, I, I want to look at these two guys. Like, 
I don't know, man. Does that have nothing? Are you ju- are you judging the books by their covers right now? I'm not trying to. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just curious who we're working with here. And where's he from? Burkoff. Mm. Is that German? Is that Russian? What is Burkhoff? it? Burkoff? This sounds German. To sounds me. German, doesn't it? To me, yeah. yeah. I could be totally wrong. So anyway, what else? You, what do you? What else did you have that you noted that you feel like we should contribute? That you should contribute to this? <clears throat> Oh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. I wrote a big section of the second paragraph. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to write my book. Don't. So I, just, I just copied a whole bunch of cool stuff, I thought. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> let me just see if I can... Uh, right here. Uh, did I read this already? The church may be re- represented as the great means of grace by which Christ, working through the Holy Spirit, uses mm-hmm. for the gathering of the elect. Yeah, I did. You did. Yeah. Edification of the saints. Oh, but I didn't read all of it. The edification of the saints and the building up of his spiritual body. Mm. He qualifies her for this task by endowing her with all kinds of spiritual gifts and by the institution of the offices for the administration of the word and the sacraments, which are all means to lead the elect to their eternal destiny. Mm-hmm. Love that man. It's good. It's awesome. <clears throat> Anything else on there? Uh, let's see. So right here. So this is where I think uh, I think I read this too. The church is not a means of grace alongside of the word and of the sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, you read. So that it looks like I did. Yeah, man. I just repeat myself. Um, <laughs> no, I think that's that's so that's the introduction. I think my introduction is a lot shorter than yours. Um, I think so. it might be. I mean, there's this, and then he gets into the means of grace and starts defining it. Right. So let's do this to finish up. Let's let's just have a conversation. Okay. Spend the next few minutes talking about this because this isn't just a fun topic to study. This is a reality that's biblical: the means of grace. So mm-hmm. let's just talk about how is it that we as Christians and how should our church body and other churches be enjoying and taking advantage of and not neglecting the means of grace. Hmm. Mm. Maybe, well, maybe. I guess the first statement I would make is I don't I wouldn't expect everybody to run out and buy or read systematic theology. <laughs> no. No, 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 absolutely not. But I think uh, I think if you're a student of God's word, it's helpful. Absolutely. I think it, yes. Right. These hold these hold zero authority. Right. But they point to the Bible. That's right. And give an explanation um, you know that takes you deeper. Do you remember right? the C.S. Lewis analogy I gave you? Or that I had learned last week, last week. about how theo- you know, theological study, though it's less than the Bible, it's still helpful. And what yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Do you remember it? I don't remember the quote, but yeah. You want to quote it? Do you do you want to quote Go it? Go ahead. I'll, I'll just I'll just because what you were saying reminded me of it. Just that mm. you know, a map. He talked about the map. A man standing on the Atlantic Ocean over on the European side. He won't ever be able to explore the Atlantic without a map, right? Mm. So if somebody could say, well, why would I want the map when I can have the real thing? The map is just colored ink. I want, I want the ocean. And, and C.S. Lewis just said, well, man, you will never accurately study or explore the ocean without the experience of men who have been there and then wrote the map for you. Mm. And so like Burkhoff and Frame are simply these guys, one of you know, thousands of men and women over the centuries that have experienced uh, through scripture God. Mm. And have taken the time to kind of lay out some maps for us to better explore Christ and and the scriptures. So I just think it's like these guys are helping lay out the map for us, man. Yeah, yeah but it's absolutely. not the, it's not the it's not the meat. The word of God is the meat. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. But but nonetheless, it is helpful. Nonetheless, nonetheless, it's helpful. Right. I, if you think about the way that a map is used, I, I mean, any time that I'm going out on the Kennebec, like yeah. I'm I'm using a map. Yeah. Right? I mean, it shows me where all the obstructions are that other people have hit. <laughs> Dude, that's helpful, man. <laughs> right? <laughs> you got kids on that boat, man. That's right. Yeah, stay away from those obstructions. You know? What kind of obstructions? You like underwater rocks, rocks that are up high? Too high? Rocks, Dude, yeah. Other vessels awesome. that have sunk. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How many sunken vessels are on the Kennebec? Uh, so there are... Well... As far as like sunken obstructions, which okay. can be vessels or man-made structures that are now underwater, yeah, there's there's quite a bit. There's quite a That's bit. Crazy. Most of them are up towards like Augusta, okay, where the dams and stuff were, yeah, stuff like that. Um, but some of them are old like piers. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I think there's like underground 
uh, or underwater, underground, underground. underwater, uh, underwater, uh, like concrete, you know, structures and gotcha. stuff like that. Uh, but you start looking like towards the mouth of the Kennebec, and you start looking like out into the uh, the other bays, like Hawkswell yeah. and like out there. There's t- there's tons of stuff that's it's amazing underwater sunk. Good things to avoid. Good things to avoid. Yeah. That's right. It's yeah. good, man. Um, where does the scripture tell us about grace, means of grace? Uh, I've got, I got, I got something pulled up here, and I don't know if you have anything that comes to mind. When you think about just growing in the means of grace or having access to these things like the Word of God, does the scripture actually tell us that that means of grace are? So I don't think the term means of grace is actually used. Sure. Um, but when I think of the means of grace, when I think of um, the gospel mm-hmm. laid out, um, explanation uh, and application, the first place I think of is Romans. Okay. Um, you know, the first half, you know, um, first half being instruction, second half being application. Mm-hmm. Um, the you theology. talking about Ephesians? Huh? Ephesians, Ephi- well, Ephesians as well. Okay. I think Ephesians. Uh, yeah, I think you know you want to you want to look at the theology. I think mm-hmm. Romans is a great place to look, and mm-hmm. I think. Uh, but you know Ephesians, yeah, sure. I, <laughs> there's so many places to look, mm-hmm. um, and and I think what that does is kind of like that map. It paints it mm-hmm. paints a whole picture, right? You're not just looking at one piece of text. Um, you are looking at the whole of Scripture. And we've talked about how important this is, how looking at the whole of Scripture, that it's telling one story. It's, yeah. telling, it's, it's telling of who God is. Yeah. And, I, and so you can't just look at one piece and ignore the rest. That's right. <clears throat> Second Timothy 2, uh, I was just sharing this with you and Mark yesterday. Second Timothy 2 talks about Tim- Timothy's being told to be strengthened in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Timothy was already a Christian, and he's being told to be strengthened in grace. I think, and you could you could make the case that Paul was saying, Timothy, you have means of grace here. Like, mm. So continue to access this grace and be strengthened in that grace. It's not enough to be just saved once, saved and then, and then just float on that salvation, but we have to intentionally and consciously access that grace through the means that God has given us. So if you think about it with these three, the, the Word mm-hmm. of God, fellowship, and prayer, mm-hmm. at any given time, we can think like, uh, so people, if you're listening right now and you're a believer and you're thinking, well, I've had weakness in my life, there's times where I've struggled, you could just ask, ask yourself, well, those three means of grace, Word of God, fellowship, and prayer, are you utilizing and accessing the means of grace mm-hmm. to stay connected, to stay close? I mean, people are struggling right now, man. Mm-hmm. I've struggled, you've struggled with walking with the Lord being strong in the Lord mm. so how do we regain that strength yeah well I think it's right like you were just saying um, I think when it comes to the means of grace are we are we being participants mm-hmm. in that are we accessing the things that have been given to us um, you know it, it, <clears throat> yeah absolutely um, fellowship is one of those things that I, I think right now that's that's a it's a big topic yeah um, it's a big topic in times where you know people are you know either having to quarantine, being called to quarantine, being limited in numbers that can gather. Um, you know, like this is this is an area that we we know it's a means of grace for us to come together Absolutely, and be the yeah. church, um, and we're we're called to do that. That we're called to do that. Um, but you know, even yeah, even so, in the individual aspect of it, when you when you okay, so when you aren't, let's say, praying as often, or, or like just stay with fellowship. Let's say we're not in fellowship as, as often. You know, our uh, me personally, I often those other means of grace. Like I don't access them as much as I should. Yeah. You know, like that. It's like when you stop uh, being active in those, mm-hmm. like the rest of them suffer as well. That's right. You know, and and this is one of the reasons why we need one another, you know, to encourage one another to, you know, we carry each other's burdens, you know, through whatever trials we might be hitting in this life, you know, it, if, if we are doing this together, um, it, you know, that fellowship piece of, you know, if we're, we're looking at that as a means of grace, what are you going to do for me when I'm going through a hard time, mm. when I'm going through a trial? 
you're going to point me to God's word. You're going to be praying, not just for me, you're going to be praying with me, right? We're accessing the means of grace, That's right. right? We're looking, we're looking to God. So right? gathering as a church is not just a formality, man. It is a necessity. Absolutely. It is absolutely gathering as the church, not just Sundays, but yes, including Sundays on that day that the Lord rose from the dead. We gather and proclaim together as a church, but then continually we gather as much and often as we can. And uh, like you said, this right now in our culture and in some places more so than in Maine, it's even, it's getting harder and harder to do that. I think right now every individual in the church needs to ask themselves, am I in neglect of this one even... I love that we're ending on fellowship. Let's just talk like that's awesome. Am I in neglect of that means of grace mm. and believe that it is so essential for me to grow in Christ and I cannot grow in Christ the way he wants me to by myself. Mm. I have to have other people in my life mm. and it has to be beyond text messages and video chats. It has to mm. be. And so there's an element of faith that we have to be able to say, okay, uh, in a world that's kind of scary right now and risky, um, this still has to happen. It has to happen. Absolutely. But, it, I mean, it doesn't have to, have to happen the same way that it has in the past. No, not right? the same way. Like, no. I mean, you know, if, if you if you have to take extra precautions right now, like, it can look a little bit different. That's right. But I think the point is that we can't isolate ourselves. That's right. Because not only are we denying, yeah. right? Denying a grace that's been extended to us, and given to us, and we should be active and a part of. Um, uh, yeah, what was the other point I was going to make? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, brain just went blank. Um, yeah, so like we can't, we can't do this alone. We know that we can't. Scripture says you know that we're not to do this alone. Yeah, um, and you know that we are to be the body of Christ. Um, so you know maybe you can't go to a Sunday gathering, right? Right now, but right right now. But if if you're able to get together with others from the body like that for a time you know can be can be fellowship yeah right they can you're still an active part of the body and i think that's we need to remember that that's what we're called to be we're called to be active in our faith right that all throughout scripture especially in the new testament right Mm -hmm. is faith in action yeah. Um, and and like doing life together, we see this in in Acts. Um, we see this uh, in um, help me out here. Um, the Bible. The, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think all of the epistles, right? Oh, like, absolutely. I, I, you know, we're, they're talking to bodies. Yeah. Right. They're talking to whole churches, mm-hmm. not just not individuals. individuals. Yeah. Uh, so we know that it is it is an expectation for the church to gather together, um, and you know as the church comes together and and uh, <laughs> edifies one another, and you know there's a process of sanctification sanctification that happens through that. Yeah, um, right. it it's it's what we're called to do. Amen. You know. First Peter 5, 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. <clears throat> Interesting that it speaks about someone. Mm. The enemy can't devour the entire church, mm. but he will try to find someone. Mm. And any nature video that you ever have seen with lions attacking, they are most successful when they find the one that's been picked off from the crowd. That's right. That's picked off from the pack. So if you're isolating too long, the enemy sees it. He's not mm-hmm. dumb. He knows. He's watching. And he will prowl around until you're alone, until you've isolated long enough, and he will attack. And you will be weak mm. because you're not strengthened by the body. Mm. Yeah, actually, you know, we see this with almost every predator, right? Yeah. And even here in North America, like where there are wolves, yeah, right? Uh, just to relate it back to the Bible, where there are wolves... That is exactly what they do is they separate, they, they work a group of animals, a herd of animals to a point where there is, where they get separated. Mm-hmm. And once they're separated, that's when they attack. That's right. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's, and I think we all need to be, we all have to be aware of that because if, if we are intentionally separating ourselves, mm-hmm. 
you know, we're, we're putting ourselves in a vulnerable position. And we may not feel that way. That's right. But we need to know that that is the case. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and to really try to prevent, prevent ourselves from being in those situations. That's right, man. One last scripture, Second uh, Peter 3. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Paul, Peter's instructing us to grow in grace. Means of grace, man, awesome. Mm. We owe a massive thanks to two great men. Who are they? Eric and Joel? No. <laughs> Burkoff and Frame. <laughs> Burkoff and Frame. We will frame. not sit here and thank ourselves. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> like weirdos. <laughs> but... Burkhoff and Frame. Yeah, what a great discussion that we, you know, yeah, be able to discuss this and, uh, and, and even a way to look at, uh, at uh, the means of grace and even think about how we, how we access them as the body. So even in fellowship, right, yeah. we're accessing the means of grace through God's word yeah. and through the sacraments. That's right. Right? Amen. And gathering together. And gathering together. Like, it's just, yeah. Amen, man. That's awesome. Amen. It is awesome. Hey, so, man, this was such a good format. I love going through these books. Um, may, guys, let us know if you liked this this discussion. Should we do more of these types of comparative through different systems? Maybe, maybe we take several doctrines and, and discuss this. We have interviews lined up with other guys. We want to interview more authors, of course, regularly. But uh, let us know how you like, like the show, if you like the format. Let us know through... How do, how, do, how do people let us know? Did you get the email set up yet? Yes, but I'm going to get to that because I have to look it up because I can't remember it. So <laughs> stall for a second while I look at Gmail. All right. So uh, <laughs> one of the ways that you can get in touch with us is through our Facebook page, what we're reading. Um, and uh, please, please, if you have not left us a review, please do so. Please. Um, the other thing is, is that we want your feedback. Uh, so... Whether it's uh, you know a five star review um, or you want to email us or message us directly, we'd really love to hear your feedback. We know a, f- a few of you that are part of our local local body here, part of New City Church. Um, you know, have given us some feedback in person, and you know we love that. So thank you for that. Um, but uh, yeah, please. If, if you're right. reading this, if you're reading this, if, if you're, you're hearing this, this uh, send us send us a message. That's right. We've got a new email address. That new email address is very simple. It's www.readingpodcast at gmail.com. What we are reading is what that stands for. www.readingpodcast at gmail.com. And I tried for other ones, but they just were all taken. So www. Somebody, somebody else is reading something reading. out there. Podcast. WW Reading Podcast at gmail.com. Gmail.com. And it stands for what we're reading. It's easy to remember. Yeah. That sounds great. What is it again? <laughs> WW Reading Podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> oh my word. Sounds like an infomercial. That's a, yeah, let's cut that out. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to in and listening to our podcast. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for listening to what we're reading. Uh, We are Joel and Eric, and uh, until next time. See you next time. Have a good one.